What's up, YouTubers? It's a nice rainy Saturday today, pouring outside, so I figured why not get in the shop and do some practice and do another video for you guys. So what I got for you today is sort of a second part to the heat to metal ratio video that I did, and it's mostly a viewer request. So one of my viewers has a welder, a Hobart MVP 210, and it's designed to weld with like fixed voltages and it doesn't have like an LCD readout like my welder. And apparently the lowest voltage his machine will go is 19 volts. And he wants to know if it's possible to weld with 024, which I have a roll of that here, or 023. Oh, there's, everybody calls it something different, but basically real thin wire and make acceptable welds with 19 volts is the lowest setting that you can go. Now, I'll be honest, I have no idea if it's possible, but we're definitely gonna find out in this video. So let's get into it. So for a setup here, I got eighth inch or 3.2 millimeter steel. And then I also got some sheet metal we'll be trying later, that scrap that we can practice on. Now, my viewer's welder only went down to 19 volts which should give you the ability to run 023 wire. I just don't know how thin you can weld uh, for material thickness with that kind of voltage for the lowest. Now, my machine recommends 20 volts and I think 450 inches per minute for wire speed on this material. So he would definitely be able to weld eighth inch, but we're gonna see how thin we can go as well as kind of adjust things as we go. You guys want to get in the habit of starting out your day when you're practicing or welding something with a standard piece of metal. Run a couple beads on something of reasonable thickness and then go on with your work. Make sure everything's running right. So using the settings that they recommended, my start was a little bit cold. My travel speed was uh, rough at the start. See how it's kind of humped up. Definitely need more voltage than where I'm at, if not lower wire feed. Very little penetration. I mean, there's none on the back, but we need to actually either up the voltage or lower the wire feed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the wire feed down to about 425 and run another weld. Now I'll be completely honest, I do very, very little MIG welding and I don't run 023 wire pretty much ever. So I'm not the greatest person for skill level, but I would say that's looking better by lowering the wire feed a little bit and keeping the voltage the same. It just is a better looking weld. So we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna lower the wire feed again a little bit, probably to 400 inch per minute. And I'm gonna drop the voltage down to 19 and a half and we're gonna see if it will weld So that was a little bit rough. Again, bead is humping up on the plate. I'm gonna cool this off and we're gonna screw around with the settings a little bit. All right, so I dropped the settings down to 19 volt and 375 inch per minute. We're gonna see what happens here. Now, I'm not even going off of any chart in the machine, which the charts are great to get a baseline of heat to metal ratio for that machine, but you always wanna adjust based on what you see. Now, I'm gonna adjust it. We have less wire feed, less voltage. We're gonna see what happens. I don't know that it's gonna weld very good on this, but we're gonna, we're gonna see. 
All right, that's a little baby weld. See how it's roped up like that? So based on my viewer's lowest setting for 19 volts, I would say he could probably actually weld a lot thinner than this. We're gonna end up doing that shortly, but I'm gonna try and get this dialed in a little bit better. So at 19 volts, I'm gonna drop the wire feed down to 350. My hope is, is that our heat to metal ratio will allow the weld to flow out more and be less humped up. Because again, it's all about the ratio of voltage to your wire feed. Yeah, based on that, I would say less, our voltage is high enough right now that I don't think that we can drop the wire feed anymore because it's starting to burn back close to the tip, which is kind of indicating that our voltage is so high that the wire can't handle it. Just out of curiosity, I'm going to drop it down to 320. You know what? Yeah, 325 for wire feed and see what happens. So yeah, it's still humped up a little bit. It is flatter. I'm having issues with that little wire. It's burning back to the tip. So I would say at this voltage level, we are gonna be somewhat limited to what we can do here. But that's kind of the point here. So what I think we'll do, I'll run one more. Let me just out of curiosity and keep it at 19 volts, lower it all the way to 300 inches per minute and see what happens. Yeah, it's not going to flatten out anymore based on that. That's actually not a bad looking weld for what it is. All right, well, let's uh, do a couple little test welds on this thin scrap metal here. One thing I want to check, I dropped the wire feed way low to 250 inches per minute and kept the same 19 volts. Now, for this thin a plate, they're recommending much lower voltage, like 16 volts and very low wire feed. So at 19 volts, 250, I'm just going to see what this runs like. So that's pretty humped up and I think we're, that's just we're gonna, what we're going to get on this thick of material. I don't think we're going to get it to flow out without higher uh, wire feed. It's just there's not enough heat there. So now let's do a little test weld which will probably blow a hole clean through this and see if we can't get this dialed in. Yep, instant hole. <laughs> Look at that. All right, well. I'm going to see what I can do for settings. We'll go from there. So I'm running 19 volts, 200 inches per minute. Keep in mind my welder for this thickness, which is 22 gauge, is recommending like 14, 13 volts and like 120 inches per minute. So I don't have too much faith that we're actually going to be able to produce a weld on this thin of material with these settings, but we'll find out. Yeah, again, same deal. The voltage is simply too high for our wire feed. And what I'm seeing happening is the wire strikes and starts like an arc. And then all of a sudden the wire burns back a little bit. And then you literally have an arc like TIG welding and then the arc blows a hole. It's kind of interesting. I'll shoot some arc footage of this now so you can see what I'm what I'm seeing. Part of what's going on here is I didn't adjust the run-in speed from running bigger wire 
and I probably could have turned it up some and it wouldn't be arcing back near the start as fast to the tip. But let's just face it, the settings aren't close to what they need to be. Well, total and epic failure. Now, for a little bit, like on this guy right here, I was able to get like a weld on there. The problem is, is that I, if I increase my travel speed, instantly the arc just jumps to the tip and it just starts to run like a TIG welder, basically. Yeah, so that's no good. And if I slow down at all, it just blows a hole clean through. And now I could totally lower my wire feed even lower than where it's at. The problem is, is that then it's literally just going to act like a TIG welder where the arc is just going to establish and go between the tip or the wire and it's going to melt the wire off. We simply have too high a voltage. So on this 22 gauge sheet, I believe it's 22 gauge. Yeah, 22 gauge. The limit of what you can weld on this, well, if your machine only goes down to 19 functional volts, I'm going to say that you can't weld this you know, with any success. Now, if I did little spot welds and then welded something like auto body, I think it's doable, but not to run any kind of functional weld on. And I'll even try that now. I'm just going to try and run a series of tacks and see if it's possible, which, you know, for auto body, which is going to be like this thin, you don't really run nonstop welds. So that's at least worth looking at if you can tack weld this. Well, it's not pretty. Let's take a look at the back of that. <laughs> Complete pass through. Wow. So that's the back of it. So, is it possible to tack weld sheet metal this thin at 19 volts? I would say yes. Is the quality of the weld going to be good? No, I would definitely say not. It's going to be, you know, almost over reinforcement. And again, if I lower the wire feed anymore, I actually dropped it to 195 anymore. And it's literally, it's not going to weld. It's just going to have an arc present. So definitely difficult. So I thought now that we know that 19 volts is going to be a de definite struggle on sheet metal. Let's lower the welder to the settings that they recommend and see what happens. So I had my contact tip stick out distance a little too far and it was running a little rough. But look at that. I'm actually pretty impressed. I've never tried to weld on this thin a material with this welder. Bead looks identical on the other side. So that's the difference. When your welder can go low enough on voltage, you can actually make a legit weld on this thin of material, 22 gauge. And that was my first time ever even a trying this. So the stick out seems to need to be very short to get this to work. I, I kind of held a 3.8 stick out and it was burning back to the tip. Once I shortened it up, it, it ran way better. Wow, pretty impressive. Let me run another bead right here, see if I can't get it to do a little bit better. Yeah, the wire still wants to disintegrate a little bit, so I think a little change in wire feed or settings might dial that in a little bit better. And it doesn't help that I can't really see what I'm doing here because of that gun angle and my eyeball angle, but again, that is an acceptable looking weld. You also have to remember this is sitting against my table. So that's helping it not blow a hole. What I'll do, let me put it this way and try and weld. Boy, I don't want to weld vertical up. Let me just do it like this and run a bead here to where it's nothing's underneath it and see if it blows a hole. I think what's keeping it from blowing a hole is the fact it's touching this. So I left this in real time. You can hear how it's literally arcing back to the tip without actually kind of welding. The reason for this is I didn't run uh, just my run-in speed. 
so it's not pushing enough wire at the start to get you know a good solid start out of it and my wire feeds a little low so those things contributed towards that also check out the fire underneath there yeah still definitely having an issue with it burning back let me uh raise the wire feed up like five and see what happens oh a little bit of fire in there Yep, still burning back. You go up a little bit more on wire feed 120. That's better. Yeah, so I guess it's not burning through. I would have thought it would have started burning a hole without the heat sink of the table, but yeah, interesting. Well, let's go to conclusion. Well, what did we learn today? Well, we learned that if your welder can only go down to 19 volts running, that you're going to have a very hard time welding sheet metal list thin and this is 22 gauge similar i would say to a lot of auto body you can definitely do spot welds but looking at that i don't think you're going to get away from it being flat out a little bit too hot and we saw that simply by lowering our voltage and lowering our wire feed we were able to run like actual legitimate welds you know there that's the front side up here by my thumb so yeah I would say that, unfortunately, in the viewer's case, the limitations of his machine will make it hard to do this. Now, that machine, fortunately, has enough power to weld, you know, much thicker metal than your average MIG welder, but I'm kind of surprised that they would have set it up to where the voltage only goes down to 19 volts, because that's a pretty limiting factor, and that's something I didn't even realize with that machine. But yeah, so if you want to weld really thin sheet metal, get a wire welder that either has digital adjustment that can drop down to 13, 14 volts, or get a transformer machine that has a tap on it for going down that low, and then you won't have any problems welding this thin. I mean, I got to say, I'm pretty impressed that this machine actually ran a bead on this, because this stuff is no joke, honestly. Like even from a TIG welding perspective, your average person would have a pretty hard time TIG welding this with minimal experience. Like this is pretty easy in comparison. So yeah, with that said, uh, I guess thanks for sticking around for the video. If you got any comments, questions, or settings that you use on your welder to weld this thin a material, you know, feel free to share them in the comments. Till next time, guys.